Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Your Overseas Home webinar, Country to City Properties in Italy Under the Microscope. My name is Christopher Nye, and I am Senior Editor at Your Overseas Home and Italy Property Guides. It's great to have you with us, uh, whether you're watching live or catching up on demand. In this uh, seminar, uh, webinar, I am being joined by Stefania Russo from the Property Organizer. Uh, Stefania, why don't you introduce yourself and, and the property organiser? That's great. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm the founder of Property Organiser. We're a company specialised in property findings in Italy. Uh, and we help our clients buying in Italy, throughout the, the country, from apartment, country homes, any type of uh, properties that somebody might look for. Fantastic. Now... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um uh, 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 stefani has a presentation and then we'll open the floor up to, up to questions uh if you have any as you go please type them into, into the questions tab on the right hand side of, of your screen if we don't get around to them all uh, any answer to questions will be forward to be forwarded to stefania so uh so, so so don't worry you will get an answer just to get you in the habit and get some interaction going why don't you put just Put in the questions tab now what kind of property you're you're looking to buy country property city properties um village property small town just so we can get a uh, some idea of where people are, are, are buying just chuck those in that'd be really great and in the meantime i will ask uh, stefania to start her presentation thank you Sure. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, as I said, my name is Stefania. Uh, I'm from Property Organizer. We are a company that specializes in property find throughout Italy. Um, so today, uh, what we're going to go through is a general overview of uh, the process and cost of buying property in Italy with a focus on the differences between country homes, therefore properties with probably land and, uh, and city uh, property, so apartment or um, property in share um, buildings. So as I said, uh, we're looking at uh, independent homes, what to check um, and for taxes and, and likely costs to consider and as well as the apartment and share building, what to check. So if there are different uh, um, kind of different angles that somebody uh, would need to consider. So first of you, uh, first of all, uh, an overview about the process of buying a, a property in Italy. So um, I would expect you know, that you, you've seen the property, you like it, and you made an offer. Uh, the offer contract is a very important uh, to kind of finalize in all the terms that, that have been agreed uh, probably verbally between the seller and the buyer. And one thing to remember is that the offer contract in Italy, uh, it's... Uh, uh, it's binding in the sense that there is no 14 days of cooling off period like it can be in the US and there is no uh, a time uh, for the uh, you know for the, all the due diligence uh, whereby a seller and the buyer can just uh, walk away uh, until the exchange so an offer, offer contract kind of establishes the basic terms of of uh, of the agreement between the seller and the buyer um Offer contracts uh, often do not have condition, and I've seen this one with uh, a lot of uh, agency that use uh, uh, just the standard uh, template, uh, pre pre um, pre kind of uh, prepared. Um, it is important to remember that offer contract can have conditions if you are concerned, for example, of. Uh, uh, a specific part of the building uh, can be conditional to a mortgage. Uh, but what is all, I always recommend to be conditional to due diligence and survey, uh, because the due diligence will check the legal part of the property, uh, so that the owner is, uh, uh, you know, is the legal, the, the seller is the legal owner of the property, uh, that the buyer can actually buy a property, because uh, there are some nationalities that. Um, might have some restrictions. Um, we've seen, for example, lately in Canada, there are some restrictions of what Canadian can buy until 2025, uh, within the last couple of years. Um, and also, um, the legal part of, of, of the process will check how the owner has become, you know, 
uh, the legal owner of a property via uh, inheritance maybe, uh, so if there have been taxes to be paid or uh, through a deed of gift, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the survey is another part uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a due diligence that is extremely important. And very often I see clients saying, well, maybe we don't need to do a survey because the property is in good condition. I can see that it's uh, recently been renovated, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the surveys will check, yes, the condition of a property, but more important, it will go through all the planning history. So we'll ensure that anything that the property has been uh, kind of subjected to from uh, when it was built to, to now, has obtained the right authorizations because not everything might have been built without asking permission. And you might think uh, that a, you know, just demolishing in, in an internal wall that maybe is not bearing, doesn't need applications. Everything needs an application and, uh, and therefore it is important that this uh, kind of history uh, of a planning uh, life, uh, let's say, of a property is checked. Um, once everything is carried out, um, there is the signing of a preliminary contract. And this one is an extremely important contract. It's legally binding, but it's when the buyer pay a deposit, usually around the 25, 30%. And then if he decided that doesn't want to go ahead and there are no legal reasons for not going ahead, he will lose his deposit. Um, didn't mention before, the offer contract usually is a small deposit. Uh, custom is that is around the 10%. We always say, try to put as little as possible, even five, 10,000. When a property is closer to a million or more, or more we, we say maybe 20, 30,000, but it's only a deposit to say, I'm going to do the due diligence, therefore put the property off the market and this one's for me showing my goodwill. Uh, the preliminary control on the other end is when all the checks should have been done, ready, and you exchange a contract and you will pay, as I said, 25, 30% of a deposit. If you change your mind and there is no legal reasons for uh, walk away from the deal, then you will lose this deposit. On the other end, it's actually a protection for the buyer because if a seller changes his mind, he will have to pay twice the deposit. So this uh, kind of uh, uh, rule ensures that the sellers cannot decide to sell it to somebody else because uh, he has found uh, another buyer. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it as I said legally binding and uh, is taken very seriously. Uh, finally, completion is when you will go to the, in front of a notary, sign the transfer papers, and you become the legal owner of, uh, uh, of your new house. So now let's have a look at what else need to be checked between country homes and, uh, and apartment. Um, the system in terms of offer, preliminary contract, completion is exactly the same. There are no changes. Um, but, uh, with country homes and villas, the four property that very often have land, uh, there are certain things that need to be, you know, you will need to bear in mind. Uh, as I mentioned, independent homes or country homes very often have land, and this can be of uh, any type of size. Uh, in Italy, if the land is above 5,000 square meters, so just over one acre, uh, but I have to say, very often, in particular with old properties, uh, this applies also to property with very, very little land. Uh, but in any case, the land is registered separate from the main house. Uh, and therefore, it is important to check who owns the land nearby. Why so? If the land nearby is owned by registered farmers or is leased out, uh, to tenants uh, who are actually registered farmers, um, there, there might be preemption right. Uh, a preemption right is uh, uh, basically a first right for refusal. So a neighbor, as I said, that is registered uh, as a farmer could have a right to buy the land before you, even if the land was never offered to them. So what to do uh, in case there is land? Uh, the seller will have to send a record delivery letter to um, the neighbor uh, and, and, and waiting for 30 days 
uh, for an answer. If there is no answer, it means it's free to sell it to anybody who, like, who, who wants. Uh, if instead there is an answer that says I'm interested, it will be obliged to sell the land to uh, you know, the, the neighbor, but has to be registered farmer. If it's somebody just says a country home nearby, there is no uh, right that can be applied. Uh, otherwise, if a seller is uh, proactive, um, and we always encourage sellers to be proactive as soon as there is an offer, uh, can go to the neighboring farmers and ask to sign a waiver that basically explicitly, explicitly says uh, that they're not interested in buying their land. Uh, land can also have right of ways from uh, neighbors, as I said, nearby farmers, communal, communal roads, and so on. So it is important to check the original deed to see whether there are any of these uh, old uh, uh, right of ways that might not appear on, uh, on, uh, on property uh, land. So not all the right of ways are shown on the maps, uh, but they are, uh, you know, they can be written uh, in the original deed. Um, outbuilding, what am I talking about when about outbuilding? Very often, uh, the, the property in the countryside or uh, independent villas have outbuildings or have garages or have uh, even pizza ovens. And although it seems that a pizza oven might not need a, a planning permission, uh, all these uh, external light, kind of external uh, building uh, from the property require authorizations. So it is important that the survey does check this type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, th this type of building and not just the building, the main building itself. Uh, one thing to say is that if there is a building that has been it's been uh, constructed without uh, authorization, uh, the seller can obtain either retrospective permission or uh, if the retrospective permission cannot be obtained, um, can discuss it with the buyer whether he wants to, to have this one demolished, uh, but at the cost um, of the seller or keep them. The important thing is that both buyer and seller are aware of what, uh, you know, uh, what is purchased. Also because if uh, um, you purchase a property with uh, a garage and then without knowing that is that was built without permission, um, the, the deed itself could be considered void. So it is important to, to ensure uh, that um, all the information is, uh, is given. Uh, utility system, what I mean with that? Um, are they connected? Uh, are they connected to the mains? Um, if they're not connected to the mains, what kind of connection do they have, for example, for sewage? Uh, it is important to remember that an septic tank or a well still need to have a planning permission. And also to bear in mind that if the properties are not connected to the mains, and maybe, you know, referring, referring again to the sewage, it might be uh, a system that disperses in, uh, in the countryside, like many, many properties, uh, in particular old property, um, have. So you will need to bear in mind that in the future you will need to update the utility system to comply with the current regulations. Uh, but again, uh, septic tanks, wells, they all need to be checked whether they were built with, uh, with the correct authorizations. Finally, certificate. Uh, of course, uh, once somebody buys a house, we need to have uh, the standard certificates and also the energy performance certificate, etc., etc. But a certificate that very, you know, that is required for country home and independent villas is the certificate of uh, destination of use for the land. So even for uh, a garden of a few thousand square meters, uh, this certificate is needed. Um, when the sellers put their property for sale, they do not ask for the certificate because it only lasts one year. Uh, and in Italy, the average for properties to be, um, you know, to get sold, they tend to be between 12 and 18 months. Um, so they're not going to apply for the certificate if it's not needed. Um, but the certificate that is also called, in short, CDU, 
um, it's a good indication of uh, what you can do for that with that land. So will you be able to build a swimming pool? Uh, will you be able to build an external building, a garage, etc., etc.? Or it's a plot of land that can become a building plot or is a plot of land that um, has it, several restrictions and therefore what you see is what you get for the next 10, 20 years. Uh, apartment and unit in shared buildings. Uh, now, um, as I was saying, uh, the process of purchasing a property doesn't change if you buy in an apartment. Um, however, it is important that you check the regulation uh, for the, the communal use of the building. Um, and also uh, ensuring that uh, you are aware of what kind of service charges uh, come with the apartment. So the condo regulation will show exactly uh, what is your percentage. Um, and also to ensure that the service charges have been paid by the seller uh, up to the moment that you become the owner. Uh, so this, it is important to ask the seller for a statement from um, the, let's say, the condominium uh, administrator that shows that the seller is up to date with the payment of, uh, of the service charges. Um, as I said, it is important that you are also aware how much you are going to pay uh, in, the, in the years that you buy the property. Uh, and therefore, um, this information very often is uh, shared uh, from the very beginning when the property is for sale. Uh, but in case uh, this information is not given to you, uh, please insist uh, to have it um, certainly before making an offer because you don't want to have a surprise uh, and finding out that uh, after you make an offer and you carry out the due diligence uh, that the service charge for the for the apartment maybe are five, six or 7,000 euros per year. Um, this obviously depends on the type of property. Um, and other things about uh, the, the, the condo regulations is to check that there are no uh, particular restrictions. Uh, in Rome, for example, um, a lot of condominiums uh, ensures that the apartment are not rented out for short lets. Uh, this is because uh, obviously with Airbnb, Booking.com, etc., etc., um, resident of building in central Rome want to avoid uh, that these apartments are usually to be like a hotel. Um, and therefore, there are some condo regulations that uh, oblige the owners to rent only uh, for long term with a minimum maybe of six and 12 months. So if you're planning to buy a property as an investment, you want to ensure that you are able to rent also for uh, two, three days uh, and, uh, and a short let. Um, another thing that to, uh, to ensure with uh, the, you know, by looking at um, the, the condo regulations is to see um, what is included and what is not included. Uh, very often with the condo regulation, there is a, a mention of insurance. So are your apartment insured uh, by paying the, the condo fees or will you need to pay a separate insurance? And I'm not talking about the content, but also part of the, of the building insurance. Um, works and authorizations. Um, as I said, we recommend very much to have a, a survey for the apartment as well as for country homes. Um, the checks that the apartment obviously will have are a little bit different um, in the sense that uh, a property, uh, as we said before, uh, independent with the land that might have uh, outbuildings, garages, etc., it is less likely so for uh, apartment. Uh, however, there might be apartments that have a loft and that has been converted into bedrooms or might have a basement that is used with be as bedrooms or converted into a bathroom, etc., etc. So all these kind of uh, uh, authorizations um, need to be checked uh, and only a, a, a proper survey will be able to see uh, whether, for example, uh, the terrace that is converted into, uh, into a lounge was uh, uh, authorized or, or not. 
Um, another thing about um, the uh, authorizations is that uh, with an, a shared building or an apartment, you need to remember that if you plan to do works, you're not just going to apply for planning permission for the works in your apartment uh, at the local authority, but you also need to check that the uh, neighbors nearby uh, or part of the building uh, are happy to, uh, to, uh, for you to carry out such work. Uh, a practical example, it could be that you want to enlarge um, some windows or maybe transform the windows into a door to go into a terrace or uh, to create a door or a window in a wall that doesn't have any of them. Um, so the application in this case would not just go uh, to the local authority, but you will need to ask permission to your neighbors. And as I said, it's not just a question of the neighbors within the building, but also can be neighbors nearby that will be affected by the opening of, uh, of, uh, of these windows. Um, Another thing is, um, in terms of the works and uh, authorizations, uh, is to ensure that the, the apartment, when you buy it, um, has no re or the seller, when you, when you decided to buy the apartment, has not agreed in advance with the rest of the owners for works in the building. Uh, because if the owner has agreed some works, um, you need to be aware that is the person who um, who has made the agreement that is responsible for for the cost uh, but all this information has to be part of uh, the preliminary so uh, the preliminary contract um, so in a practical example uh, if the, um, the the condominium has agreed that uh, they want to repaint the facade uh, and the, the agreement is being issued before completion, it will be the seller to be responsible uh, for this cost. But that is responsible for the cost as to be put in the preliminary contract, because otherwise there could be uh, some confusion. And if the cost has not been paid before completion, it will be passed to the, um, to the buyer. Uh, of course, very often, who's is going to pay for this cost uh, that already been agreed are part of a negotiation between you know in the negotiation of, of with the price uh, at the very beginning um, but as a rule the works uh, should be a responsibility of um, of a person that was legally owned uh, legally owner when uh, the, the the final decision from the condominium has been is been made um, Utility systems, instead, looking at uh, apartment and uh, property in shared buildings, of course, uh, you would expect that water, gas, electric are all connected. Uh, but you need to also check uh, whether these costs are part of the communal charges uh, or they are independently uh, paid by, um, by, the, uh, by the owner of the apartment. Uh, very often the water or the, the gas is part of the service charges. So uh, maybe more the water than the gas after the, the bills with the gas have become so high. Uh, so you need to check in advance who is very respons responsible for, for these bills. Um, one thing that's important to watch out is the use of the term centralized eating for example i always remember to, uh, remind to my clients that centralized sy uh, system in italy has a different uh, um, meaning that abroad centralized system in italy means uh, yes that the system is one for the whole building but also mean that is the regulation uh, and the 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 homeowners uh, uh, that decide when the eating will be turned on in the year and turned off. Uh, what it means in practical terms, if a condominium annually decide that the eating system will be turned on on the 1st of November and switched off uh, on the 30th of May, if somebody has a, a you know, uh, a cold summer and want to turn the eating on, won't be able to do it. 
uh, because uh, it's uh, the you know it's a centralized system. Um, finally, uh, certificates uh, again uh, need to check that the compliance of the property uh, that you buy. Uh, uh, by uh, carrying out a proper survey. Um, one thing to bear in mind, as I mentioned before, is that it's important uh, that the, the surveyor doesn't check only uh, the apartment, but also check the building. Uh, because uh, an apartment could be compliant to regulations, but maybe the, um, the building when it was built uh, did not apply for the certificate for certain certificates or you know, maybe carried out uh, compliance on the structure uh, of a building. And even if the apartment is uh, compliant to, planning to, to, to the planning legislations, because the building doesn't comply, even the apartment will not be uh, fully compliant. Uh, now a final uh, kind of uh, overview of taxes and likely cost. This one, are independently whether you buy a, an apartment or you buy a, a country home. Uh, survey would be between 500 to 1800, 2000. This one doesn't depend really on the property itself, but depends also on the location. And I always give the example of Piemont, where uh, a surveyor in the lower part of the Piemont, uh, where you have uh, you know, the Barolo regions and the Monferrato, so big country homes, um, with a lot of uh, probably land, a survey can cost between five and 800 euros. Same region, Piemont, but if you are on Lake Maggiore, for an apartment, even a two, three bedroom apartment, a survey can cost even 2,000 euros. So it really depends uh, on, the, uh, on the various provinces of Italy where the property is. Notary, notary is the... Um, mandatory person that uh, somebody has to use to transfer the property uh, and the notary varies the cheapest could be around the thousand euros for property below hundred thousand and they can go up to five thousand euros obviously that depends on the location but very much on the property price and also uh, who owns who um, owns and who, who buys the property so if there are companies involved the costing for a notary fees are a little bit higher uh, one thing to remi remember is that the notaries uh, are involved very much at uh, the end of the, of the transaction, so when it's a transfer um, of uh, ownership. Uh, and this is why, uh, even if in Italy lawyers are not mandatory, a lot of people instruct lawyers because they can uh, assist the buyers or the seller and look after their interest uh, from the very start. Um, lawyers, as, as you imagine, uh, have different fees and they vary from company to companies. Uh, in Italy, if somebody buys a through an agency, uh, estate agency get paid both by the seller and by the buyer. Uh, agency fee varies between 3 and 5% of the property price uh, with an addition of 22% of Italian VAT. And this costs the 3 to, to 5% are on each side, so both for the buyer and both for the seller. So an estate agent in Italy can earn between 7 and 10% of, um, of, uh, um, of the property price in total. Uh, property organizer, as mentioned at the beginning, we are a property consultancy company and we just uh, represent the buyer. Uh, so um, in this case, we charge 4% of the property price, but we include other services like obtaining fiscal code, opening bank account, uh, dealing with power of attorneys, and all documents in, in, uh, in English and in Italian, um, switching utilities. So we offer other services uh, within this 4%, um, but we represent only the buyer, and therefore, uh, in case uh, um, we find property that are uh, from other agencies, uh, the state agents will just be paid by the seller side. Uh, taxes, uh, two things to bear in mind with the taxes, uh, which are obviously payable at completion, is whether you buy a property that is a new build, and therefore you will pay VAT on top, and this one varies between 10% if you buy a solid home, or get reduced to 4% if you buy 
and uh, you decided that you're going to register residency uh, uh, in Italy within four, um, 18 months from completion. Uh, if instead you buy a property uh, from an individual, so generally a resale, not a company, uh, you're looking at 9% of cadastro value if you buy a holiday home, uh, or 2% of cadastro value if you buy a house and you decide uh, that you're going to register residency, as I mentioned before, within 18 months from completion. What is a cadastro value? It is important to remember that cadastro value is not the property price, uh, but it's uh, a unique um, value that is given to properties uh, on, for tax purposes. And to give a practical example, uh, a property of 500,000 might have a cadastro value of 200, 250,000. So it's always uh, much less than the, the price. So the two or nine percent will be calculated over the um, over these uh, 200,000. Uh, finally, there is a, a land tax. So if we're looking at the country homes, uh, you need also to consider how much uh, you will pay uh, of taxes on the land. So um, the land has a different value depending on the type of land that it is and the location. So if you are in Tuscany and you're buying two hectares of land, uh, so about five, uh, five acres of land that is a registered uh, DOC uh, gallo wine, here you might have a 100,000 euros value per hectare. Uh, if you buy instead in Tuscany a, some uh, land in an area where there is no vineyard, no olive groves, might be just a, a grazing land or just a garden, that kind of uh, value might be 10,000 euros per, per hectare. Um, so it is important to have a valuation and uh, a, an idea how much the property taxes on the land itself will be because that is a, a good uh, good. Uh, part of the of the taxes when you buy um, country homes or, as I said, villas with land, and as I mentioned, is fifteen percent. So, how much should you budget on top of the properties if you decide to buy a building, a, a property um, which is a new build? Consider between ten and fifteen percent to be safe. And instead, if you buy a resale, if you consider between six and nine percent on top. Uh, of a property price again uh, it's a good uh, good way to 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 manage your budget a little bit different if you're looking at property below the hundred thousand in that case uh, you need to budget between seven nine thousand euros because a lot of costs are fixed costs from the taxes the survey agency fees so you're not looking at percentages anymore so finally um and then i'll Ready for all your questions, why Property Organizer? We've been founded in 2006. We are professional indemnity insurance. We're a member of uh, Ombudsman, uh, Property Ombudsman, and the uh, Association of Independent Professionals. We carry out personalized searches. We don't charge any extra fees for our services, but actually we ensure that our buyers are protected and we only represent the buyers. We offer other services which can be independent, for clients that buy independently from other places, or they come through us and we help them to find the property and they can be helped uh, with, as I said, other services such as mortgage assistance, legal assistance, renovation. So we got a lot of projects with our clients from plot of lands to where we built villas and houses, uh, villas and pools and, uh, and, and various uh, other uh, uh, parts of properties, some renovations, some apartment. Uh, it can help with uh, pretty much anything. We try to be a single place, as I said, a key solution for a real estate for our clients. And Chris, I'm all yours now. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Stefania, for all that incredibly helpful um, help and advice there. We will be sending you out to, uh, we'll be sending our viewers uh, a copy of this so they can um, listen again and take take notes. Let, now I've got a lot of questions, I've got a lot of uh, questions answered. L let me just um, say what the result of our little straw poll at the start was. A lot of people looking at country properties in terms of areas, Sicily's looking quite popular, but uh, by the sea generally also looking quite popular, but there's people looking 
looking to buy in Italy all, uh, all over. I mean, the great thing about Italy is every part of it is beautiful from the, the lakes right down to Sicily. So, um, so thank you for answering those questions. Now, while I look through and, and work out what to ask first, let me just ask a general question. What is the market like in Italy at the moment? Are prices rising? Are prices falling? Is it, is it a good time to make an offer? What, what would you say about that? I have to say, it's busy. And depending on regions, I always say it's really difficult to just say in Italy is a good time to buy or prices, you know, sellers can negotiate more or not. There are some regions where property are very, very few. Um, so, for example, in Puglia, we have really a lack of uh, property uh, with uh, for renovation uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, requests in the previous years for truly so now it's really difficult to find trulys and also property have been already renovated tend to be sold quite quickly um, apartment again depends where you're talking uh, so city apartment milan florence treviso there are or Venice, um, they tend to be really, really quick in the market. But conversely, there are some areas which uh, uh, are much more difficult um, and uh, much slower. Uh, so it's really difficult to answer this question. Uh, depends really on on the location that people want to want to buy. Okay, and um, and where are people buying? Are there new? Are there any sort of up and coming areas that you noticed are particularly popular? Anywhere, really. We've been dealing with properties in uh, you know this year. We've been doing pretty much every region. The only region where we haven't been has been um, uh, Basilicata, uh, but otherwise, uh, from January to to now, we bought a pro you know we have clients to buy in Veneto. Uh, large country houses also in Trentino, uh, Piemonte area, a lot of country homes, uh, at the same time uh, apartment on the lakes, a lot of requests, um, villas in Tuscany, but also townhouse in Tuscany. Uh, what we've seen uh, um, kind of decrease has been the request of, a of apartment in complexes with a swimming pool. People tend to prefer more the community feeling. So there's been a lot of uh, 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 requests for townhouses, even in, uh, you know, in San Gimignano, Volterra or Todi or, you know, lot of lovely, um, you know, lovely properties with characters. So many years ago, the apartment in complexes with swimming pool were very fashionable gone that's the only things I can I can say that they've gone a little bit out of fashion okay now uh, <clears throat> since the European Central Bank has just reduced interest rates in the last hour could you just tell us a bit, a bit about mortgages are you able to to get mortgages for non-residents yeah or just residents yeah no um, it's not the residency that uh, is important um, any, there is a lot of misconception about uh, you need to be resident in Italy or Italian to, to get a mortgage in Italy. That's not true. Uh, we have a lot of clients from America, uh, from Canada, from the UK that we helped to buy, um, buy through a mortgage. What you need to remember is that there is a minimum. So a property has to have a minimum value of about 100,000. Uh, the loan to value is much lower than uh, if somebody generated their income in Italy because it's where the income is generated it's not the nationality of the, of the borrower so one can expect between uh, the 50 and 60 percent loan to value although I'm extremely happy to say that we have some clients from Switzerland that we managed to get in 80 percent but that's not the norm um, it's uh, you know the 50 60 percent is more the norm um, so it is important to remember that um, as to you know mortgages can be provided for those who um, have a tax return uh, so if somebody lives in Dubai or in Qatar and they don't uh, have a, for example a tax return uh, Italian banks will not be able to consider them but other than that English American Canadian uh, French any anybody we can we can add. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, we've had a couple of questions about the fir this first smaller deposit. Uh, people have asked, when it, is it 
is it obligatory if if an agent says we want five to ten thousand euros to take the property off the market can you say no uh, is is that a thing or, or do, you, do you have to pay yeah if you want the property off the market you need to have some kind of deposit um what is important to remember that in italy the deposits tend to be paid to the uh, seller directly and that's why i always uh, uh, kind of stress that try to give it as little as possible some agency like for example ourselves we have an escrow account that is allocated for uh, for the clients and therefore we can keep the funds as a guarantee for the buyer and the seller uh, but one thing that to bear in mind is that one cannot just change their mind so if uh, somebody make a, a payment even uh, to us as a guarantee uh, if we just uh, you know if a due diligence that we carry out shows that the property cannot be sold and there are issues that cannot be resolved uh, therefore the, the buyer has the right to get the, the deposit back um, on the other hand if a buyer just sees something else and says oh i changed my mind i don't want to buy it anymore that deposit will have to be paid to the seller um, so it, it is uh, uh, important to remember that if you don't put a deposit down the property can be sold to, no, to somebody else okay fantastic now now we've had a few people asking about planning permission i mean like most people you know you you find the perfect house but it's, there's just something missing it hasn't got the pool there's an outbuilding that you want to ren renovate how difficult is it to obtain planning permission for example this is from uh, one of our readers how difficult is it to obtain planning permission for example, installing a septic tank, a swimming pool. And he's also asking about things like tourist lodges and glamping tents, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, septic tank is quite straightforward. If there is no sewage uh, as part of the property uh, or there is no sewage system, um, it's a very straightforward application. Uh, swimming pool is can be straightforward but first uh, as i mentioned before about the certificate of the destination of the land that you need to check uh, what can be built uh, within the land and uh, although you one cannot ask uh, for a, um, you know during an offer uh, to have the offer conditional to planning permission for a swimming pool because that takes uh, time and money because obviously you need to do a project you need to have a few months for uh, submitting the project and then waiting and depending on which region it can take uh, three months to nine months so you can't ask a seller to put a property on hold for you know for so many months uh, but it is important to know whether you are able to build it so you can make an offer conditional to check that the property does not have any restrictions to put a swimming pool. Uh, and the same things for glamping or, uh, uh, or any other type of buildings. When you make an offer, you can, you can check whether there are restrictions uh, for putting, uh, you know, uh, for making an application on glamping or uh, um, an application for uh, installing a garage. Uh, because a surveyor should check all the regulations, check what is already existing on the plot of land, uh, what is already been built, has this uh, plot of land uh, reach the top of um, uh, of his uh, um, let's say buildability. I don't know if it's such a word, <laughs> uh, but if a property, a plot of land says that you can build up to you know six hundred square meters. Uh, uh, a volume or oh, sorry 600 square meters of uh, properties and you already have a house of 400 and another guest house of 200 you will know that you cannot build anything extra uh, but if for example you have only 400 square meters villa and in that plot of land you could build up to 600 you know that you have another 200 square meter that you maybe you can build a garage another house or something Okay, great. Um, now we've got we've got so many questions that if you don't mind, we'll just we'll we'll continue a bit beyond the, the official finishing time. Okay, so uh, so we've got a question: Is there any minimum EPC now acquired in Italy, or will there be an update in the next few years? They are talking uh, about uh, updating. Um, 
I believe we're talking about uh, a, the minimum of at least a D. Um, uh, new build now, they all tend to be built as an A, B, C. Anyway, most of them are A and B. Um, but one thing I would say, uh, because uh, there has been uh, regulations or articles discussing about uh, uh, the energy efficiency and the obligation to update in the energy efficiency, uh, this kind of obligation only apply for new building or when you do renovation on, uh, you know, on, on properties uh, uh, where there are energy efficiency uh, issues, like it could be, I don't know, changing all the windows or, uh, you know, you do a full renovation. If it's a property, uh, if you buy a property that it's uh, dated but livable and you're not planning to do renovation, you're not expected to update the property to reach the, the kind of levels of uh, energy efficiency. Okay. Uh, we've had a question from Rob uh, about service charges mm -hmm. and ongoing service charges. So you you have service charges for shared buildings. Are there any ongoing charges for a house in the country? No, because uh, the, the service charges, if you if you ha have an independent uh, uh, house, your charges will be uh, the normal consumption uh, of, uh, you know, of the utilities if you have a swimming pool obviously you need to budget for maintaining the swimming pool and that can be between the 1500 to 2000 euros per year more or less uh, to have somebody who change the water and check the the chlorine level uh, throughout the summer etc etc the only things that somebody should uh, bear in mind but that is uh, both for country homes apartment share building any type is uh, property taxes um, not the one that you pay a completion but the annual property taxes um, if you are in the uk you're used to the you know uh, council taxes that's similar uh, if you are in the us again there are annual taxes the good things that in italy is that the property taxes are never uh, a huge amount um, so for an apartment a council taxes uh, could be between the 100 to the 300 euros uh, per year, um, depending obviously on the size. But uh, generally, we haven't seen uh, apartment uh, with more than a thousand euros um, per year of uh, council taxes. Um, if you have a large country home, the council taxes can be a few thousand euros per year. But we never close to, you know, for example, what America. Uh, American uh, citizens have to pay for their annual council taxes that, you know, we have clients that I'm told they pay ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year uh, of uh, annual taxes. Well, yes, well, it, it looks like you, you, you pay in a year what I pay in a month yeah, in, the, <laughs> in the UK. So that's that is very tempting. Uh, Adrian has asked, at which point in the process the property is checked for outstanding debts, past mortgages or other bills? Okay, if uh, uh, you don't deal with uh, a, um, a lawyer, uh, that would be at not, uh, when you go to the notary. Uh, as I said, the notary tend to be pretty much at the, uh, at the end of the line uh, of the process. Um, if you have a lawyer instead, um, generally these things that get checked um, before the signing of a preliminary contract or it is very advisable to check these things uh, before the preliminary contract if a property has a mortgage for example it's not an issue but what one needs to ensure is that the mortgage is not higher or what is miss what is the less left left to be paid is no higher of what you need to pay at completion because you don't want find a situation that uh, the seller receive the money and instead of pay that money towards his mortgage uses it and then a completion he doesn't have enough to pay the mortgage off um, and the same for the service charges all these things get checked anyway uh, closer to completion by the notary uh, because if these things are not checked then they get passed to the to the new buyer and you don't want that no okay uh joanne has asked whether whether your fee the property organizer fees uh are on top of the six to nine percent or on top of the agency fees yeah. you know, 
as well. No, when I um, when I made the, the 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 kind of the average is within that kind of fee, the the costing on total. Excellent, um, and presumably once uh, if we've gone via your services, we yeah, I mean we know that we're paying a fair price because you will know the market better than. Better than better than we will. Well, I hope so. Uh, we have uh, consultants uh, throughout Italy, uh, from Puglia to Sicily to Lombardy and uh, Liguria, Tuscany, Umbria. We, you know, we cover all the regions. Uh, so we we are spread throughout uh, throughout uh, throughout Italy, and uh, all of our consultants uh, have a good knowledge of uh, various areas. Uh, um, of the country um so yes and, we, and i said we we've been in business for well 18 years in uh, in a couple of weeks um and i'm you know we have a good experience a good relationship with uh, um with local agencies so when people come through us it doesn't mean that they're going to buy property that we advertise because we only have a few property that we advertise when buy the seller asks us to sharing properties um, with uh, prospective buyers but our role is a property finding so we search throughout the market we get in touch with all the local agency we get in touch with all the private owners uh, with uh, developers so we can provide uh, to our clients a full portfolio of properties matching their requirement and then they can make a decision what they want to see it they meet us they come to italy with us well, they meet us in italy uh, uh, so all our consultants are based in Italy, and then we help them throughout the process from the negotiation to the completion, and we attend uh, the notary office with them. And very often, our clients don't even come for completion. They give us a power of attorney, and then they can come to the house when they already have the keys, the utilities are on, and they're happy to, you know, they, they can enjoy the property rather than just dealing with uh, this uh, uh, kind of bureaucracy um of, uh, in front of a notary which is very boring yeah, absolutely okay look uh, we have run on for almost 10 minutes so i think we we better let you go now uh yeah. thank you to stefania for all your really insightful tips and advice we've had lots of comments about how uh, how how helpful uh, it's been you've been um so to our viewers we would recommend that you Get in touch with the property organizer to discuss your requirements in details we haven't had a chance to to answer even half the questions but you've got uh, stefania's contact details there do please call her get in contact with her and uh, and you will get those questions answered just for our own for yours at home it, we would be very grateful if you leave us a review on trust pilot so we can get the word out there that we can help people so thank you again Stefania, thank you for turning up and uh, being so help helpful and for asking such great questions. Thank you. Uh, happy property property hunting in Italy. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.